Good evening, friends. Thank you, Sushil, once again for what you have been doing all this while and promoting every one of us to this level of, I would say, the medical status now. We have uh, honored to welcome Dr. Amish Mittal. Let me introduce sir, though he doesn't require any, any introduction to any form of the medical fraternity. He has established himself so well that he is one of the legends in the field of us. But just few formalities to be completed. Sir is a BBS 1980 and MD 1984 and DM 1987 un under Professor MMS Ahuja, who was a legend in the field of endocrinology and he was a blue eyed boy of Dr. Ahuja. Chairman, presently, sir, Chairman and Head of Endocrinology and Diabetes uh, Vedanta, sorry, Max. is old Max. 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 <laughs> so, <laughs> it is in the Max Sake, where he has been there now for about three years now, sir. Four. four years. And he is the head in the department of endocrinology, not only the Max Sake, but all endocrine department of the Max group. He has been awarded Padam Bhushan in 2015, and same year. It is a very coveted award for the medical fraternity in the 2015 only. I've been many, many fellowships which I don't want to go on right uh, But what I would like to compliment Dr. Mittal in a one way that he is one of the leading endocrinologists and he's a thought leader of the medical fraternity. What he thinks, what he plans, what he does, it has been accepted in every walk of life, particularly medical fraternity. I've really been proud of being here with him today. I really compliment Dr. Mittal for being with us all this while. So thank you so much. May I request Dr. Kanda sir to introduce us to the Sir, it's a really a joy. Uh, we, we learn with a fun here. Actually, CME is uh, not here a syllabus. It's something on this spot. We, we interact with our friends, we exchange our knowledge. And we are lucky to have you once more. Osteoporosis, as laymen uh, may call it, porous bones. It's not a new topic for us, and you are not a new speaker to us. If you ask me, you are one of my best orator and teacher I have ever come across all through my life. Sir, Umuje ho yaad aagya ho kete na hari anant hari katha ananta. गावे सुने ही सब विधि सब संता तो मेडिकल लाइन में ये नॉलेज इट इज अनंत एवरी टाइम इवॉल्विंग तो ऑस्टियोपोरोटिक नॉलेज नॉलेज फॉर ऑस्टियोपोरोसिस इज आल्सो इवॉल्विंग व्हेन वी लर्नड इट सम 5 इयर्स बैक मेनी न्यू मॉलिक्यूल्स हैव कम सर एंड आई एम सरप्राइज एंड आई रादर कंफ्यूज्ड व्हेन टू कंबाइन व्हिच विद मॉलिक्यूल व्हिच टू यूज फर्स्ट व्हिच टू कंबाइन और नॉट टू कंबाइन so it's always a changing knowledge. We will learn from you today. And bone is very dynamic. All the, all the age, it is breaking and making. Whether the balance is positive or negative. If it is negative, it will be osteopenia or osteoporosis. And you are the master. Sir, take us through the journey of osteoporosis. Thank you. 
Now, as today we are talking about osteoporosis, but I am just highlighting the importance of severe D deficiency before we go to that. <coughs> the ladies have some osteomalacia, you always have to rule out secondary causes of osteomalacia. Don't forget to screen for nowadays pure nutritional osteomalacia does happen. It happened a lot during COVID again. We saw a flurry of cases because people were working from home and didn't go out. So there was no sunlight exposure. I suddenly saw these youngsters coming with again pseudo fractures, which I have not seen for some time. So secondary causes of osteomalacia should be ruled out. It's not so common now as it used to be when we were students that you know you don't need to investigate with the nutritional level. So you investigate for celiac disease, check for the medication patient is on. You know, those are at least the basics and some others of course. And then you give the 60,000 D3 weekly for six weeks, followed by maintenance dose. But a lot of people are saying that even this is not necessarily the best way to treat. It's okay to treat, but when you look at the signs, randomized controlled trials comparing different D regimens, they are not that many. They are not that many. So this is just one of the things from textbook to textbook, teacher to teacher without solid evidence. Now there is more and more evidence that a single bolus dose of 60,000 followed by just a daily dose is sufficient to treat most osteomalacia. Okay, but anyway, you can do what, this is not wrong, but I am just saying that this was not based on, this was based on clinical, you know, just clinical experience. This is not based on any trial. This type of trial is not the randomized clinical, a group ko ye diya, a ko ye diya, farak de ka, aise nahi tha. It wasn't like that. Okay? So, but my professor and Professor Mathur alluded to him, uh, Professor Ahuja, I used to say, Are, vitamin D de do, jaise de na hai, tumare jo schedule achha rachha de do. Give the patient some vitamin D, you keep it in. It's standard thing. That's how we were taught, that's how we, we learned. But it's not necessarily true, and we'll come to that. And you can see the same lady after some time. See how nicely the bone has joined, and it becomes odd. She became all right. So, D deficiency is a serious issue in India even now. However, in more sort of affluent surroundings, it is relatively less common, severe deficiency. However, even now, if you were to check in Delhi, for example, and uh, our friend Raman was doing some studies in Delhi school children recently, again, recently, this is like one month ago, and the D levels in 80% of school children are below 10 nanograms. So it's, it's horrible, you know, it's not a great thing. So keeping that in mind in the background, that in India, D deficiency is an important component of osteoporosis also. Now what's the difference here? This is frank osteomalacia. When you have chronic D deficiency, which is not so severe, but without a high PTH of 500 and all. So supposing my, I, I don't go in the sun and I don't take any vitamin D, supposing the vitamin D level is 8, right? Not unusual, you look check it, you will do Okay, supposing it is like that. And maybe my PTH is nothing, 60, 70, not really 500 like this thing. I have some aches and pain, nothing much. So if I remain in that state without realizing for years, what happens is that when we have low vitamin D, the body will compensate by pushing out PTH from the parathyroid glands, which will push out calcium from the bone. A low vitamin D means less calcium absorption. So a theoretical concept is it. Low vitamin D, less calcium absorption, hypocalcemia, transient. It doesn't really happen visibly. And to compensate that, the body will throw out calcium from the bone. Right? So the body, our machinery, is designed to keep our serum calcium normal. Even if it sacrifices its bone. The bones are the reservoir. So it is not so severe to cause osteomalacia. It is not so severe to cause osteomalacia. It is a slow chronic process. And that's why chronic D deficiency is an important component of, of contributor to osteoporosis. This is something we need to understand. This is always combined with calcium. Remember that calcium D go together. So all skeletal effects of vitamin D are more clearly seen when it's given with calcium. Right? Without calcium, so substrate nahi hai agar. Agar eta hi nahi hai, cement nahi hai, to vitamin D kaise usko karega? You need that substrate for bone, right? You need calcium. So uh, endocrinologists are very confused. Okay, they are confused lot. They think a lot, so they are more and more confused. Now, the definition of all, uh, vitamin D deficiency, are you talking of population or are you talking of patients? This is a difference. Different societies have lumped together. 
ये वो एंडोक्राइन स्टडी यूएस ने पेशेंट पॉपुलेशन पे दिया है इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ मेडिसिन ने पॉपुलेशन पे दिया तो पेशेंट्स का अलग होता है और पॉपुलेशन का अलग होता है तो अब आप पॉपुलेशन बोली सबका इंडियन कोलेस्ट्रॉल सौ से कम हो जाए सेवेंटी हो जाए उतना ही होने वाला है राइट सो यू कॉन्ट हैव अ गोल दैट ऑल द पॉपुलेशन शुड है इंडियन कोलेस्ट्रॉल एट सेवेंटी राइट बट वेन द पेशेंट कम्स टू विद प्रॉब्लम यू वॉन्ट इंडियन कोलेस्ट्रॉल टू बी सेवेंटी So similarly for vitamin D, you can't expect everyone to have 20 nanograms as you think that everyone should. So it depends on population versus patients. Where is the definition? Are you talking of the skeletal effects of vitamin D or the extra skeletal effects of vitamin D? And that's also important because extra skeletal effects. Covid में आपने बहुत देखा है vitamin D का प्रयोग कैसे लोग उसको देते हैं और क्या उसका कोई role है वो आज मैं discuss नहीं करूँगा लेकिन I can always answer the health questions. On normal or optimal में क्या फर्क होता है? ये भी एग्जांपल एलडीएल कोलेस्ट्रॉल का बहुत अच्छा है एलडीएल कोलेस्ट्रॉल कोलेस्ट्रॉल किसी का एक्सीडेंट से तो अब नॉर्मल है आई एम नॉट शर्ट इट्स क्वाइट नॉर्मल मोस्ट ऑफ पॉपुलेशन वुड हैव एलडीएल लेवल्स आप सब कई ऐसे लोग का बेस हैं दैट्स नॉट एन नॉर्मल बट इट इज नॉट ऑप्टिमल राइट सो व्हेदर दैट वाइटामिन डी लेवल यू फाइंड ऑफ 15 और 12 एट टाइम्स व्हेदर दैट इज इट इज इट इज नॉट रियली एज नॉर्मल बट इट इज नॉट ऑप्टिमल राइट फॉर बोथ सो ये डिफरेंसेस आते हैं इंटरनेशनल लेवल पे In trying to decide vitamin D level, that's why there is so much confusion, right? So, so how should we do it as clinicians? Is there any third question mark? So, here, our nanogram wala dekhiye, lab lab mein nano ball hota hai. To dhyan rakhiye, wo farak hota hai. Kya bolo dhyan nahi dete? Nano balls is two and a half times of nanograms, right? So, do remember that. That digit. So, if for practical purposes, I will leave with one number in your head, twenty nanograms. If your patient, if your, you know, generally whomsoever you are seeing is more than 20 nanograms per ml, you are okay. The lab may say deficient, ये वो वो सब बकवास है. 20 nanogram के ऊपर आप ठीक हैं. 30 nanograms is what you would like to achieve in someone whom you are treating for osteoporosis. इसको आप दे रहे हैं vitamin D. इसकी bone problem है. इसको osteoporosis है वहाँ 30. 40 से ऊपर कोई benefit है कि नहीं known us. वो कहानी है कोई को 50 60 के लोग होते हैं हम कॉलेज होते हैं 60 चाहिए ये सब अभी डेटा नहीं है सॉलिड यू नो सो फॉर अस ऑप्टिमम डी लेवल इस 20 टू 40 नैनोग्राम्स जस्ट रिमेम्बर दैट ऑलवेज ओके 20 टू 40 नैनोग्राम्स इस ऑप्टिमम एंड इन डोज हुम वर ट्रीटिंग फॉर बोन डिजीज़ तहार 30 टू 40 बट इवन इफ यू आर ट्रीट इसमें कुछ बाकी सब नहीं है। अब हम सब मान ले रहे हैं कि विटामिन डी लेवल ही आ रहा है। अभी हमने इसमें बहुत सारे स्लाइडें सब बता दी। एक स्लाइड रखिए। There is lot of issue in measuring vitamin D. Lot of issue. We don't deny that ये देखिए। एक सैंपल का देखिए कहाँ से कहाँ तक जा रहा है। Different labs में। America का है यहाँ का नहीं। From here to here. So one thing we forget is that we are often not measuring vitamin D accurately तो उससे भी फर्क पड़ता है। तो वो ठीक है। Those factors apart, we know that we are deficient. That's there's no doubt. We've done the studies using all new techniques. But the fact is that the best way to measure is through chromatography or LCMS MS. That is the most accurate way. The CLIA, which is most commonly used, is doubtful. It's okay we use it, but you have to be clear that it's not. So now LCMS MS has is becoming available. I expect in two to three years, all major labs will have it. Some labs have already have. So we should, if in an ideal world, आप कर नहीं सकते वो अभी क्योंकि हमें नहीं कर पा रहे इतना मतलब you know patients को होने के बाद भी availability उतनी नहीं है cost ज़्यादा है but ठीक हो जाएगा. Ultimately, all vitamin D levels should be measured by LCMS dash MS. LCMS dash MS. If you have the option, write in the prescription if it's available by that. You will get the correct reading. So, ना तो हमको ये पता कि कितना ऑप्टिमम है, ना हमको ये पता कि नापते कैसे हैं, ना हमको वह खुद पता था पता था नहीं बैठने के बारे में। It's all you know all over the place। But इतना पता कि 10 से कम तो नहीं होना चाहिए, 12 से कम या 10 से कम वो थोड़ा वो है, उससे कम नहीं होना चाहिए। और 20 से ज़्यादा पे कोई मेजर बोर्ड प्रॉब्लम नहीं हो so this is just a background so that we understand where we are. So, the Indian Society for Bone Mineral Research uh, came out with a position paper. I was a senior author in this paper uh, two years ago about 
कैसे हम मैनेज करें और चल प्रसिद्ध ध्यान दे यही मैं डिस्कस करूंगा और व्हाट शुड इंडियन फिजिशियंस डू सो वी नो वी ऑलरेडी सेड लाइफ एक्सपेक्टेंसी इन इंडिया इज गोइंग अप ये 77 टू 2050 से पहले पहुंच जाएगी वी ऑलरेडी एट 74 आर्स यू नो व्हेन वी गेन इंडिपेंडेंस इट वाज 50 अराउंड 50 इट शुड एक्सक्लूडिंग उसमें वो होता है इंफेंट मोर्टैलिटी मान के नहीं एवरीबॉडी वुड नो समबडी विद हेल्थ यू नो it's not something that is. so hip fracture is the most devastating consequence of all but even fractures are a marker and they can be dangerous but hip fractures are the most because there is no escape from hip fracture you know and the important thing is that most orthopedic surgeons think it is nothing we will leave this how many fractures are there these are all calculations statistical it's boring for you but the last thing is important ye bhi aapko pata hai aap purane hamare dikhe reviews padhiye तो हमने लिखा है कि इंडिया में मेल फीमेल रेशियो कुछ सेम ही है वन इज टू वन है ये मेल ज्यादा है ये कुछ नहीं है हॉस्पिटल बेस्ड डेटा था सब गलत है और हॉस्पिटल में वीमेन वर नॉट डॉट टू द हॉस्पिटल मेन हैड मोर ट्रोमेटिक फ्रैक्चर्स ये सब बेसिकली दैट वाज ऑल स्क्यूड डेटा इट इज नाउ क्लियर दैट लाइक एवरीवेयर वीमेन आर मोर इफेक्टेड देन मेन एंड इट रेशियो मे बी 2 टू 3 टू 1 एटलीस्ट डबल तो है so the other thing is when i talk to my orthopedic friends ki hip fracture mortality kya hai kya zero kisi se bhi nahi hamara nahi mortality matlab kuch hai to mere ka bhai aap bole hamare to patient dete hue aate hain aur chalte ho jaate hain to mere that's right but what happens after that they are absolutely right they are great sir you know to chikhe the to maine ek baar many years ago when i was in apollo so i said mai chalo call karte hain bare mein तो पहले पांच पेशेंट को कॉल किया टू हेड ऑलरेडी डाइड है वो कुछ हो गया निमोनिया हो गया ये हो गया तो व्हाट एवर सो व्हाट आई एम ट्राइंग टू से इज दैट सर्जिकल डिसिप्लिंस हैव टू लुक एट क्रॉनिक केयर और आउटसोर्स द क्रॉनिक केयर टू फिजिशियंस दे आर आउटस्टैंडिंग टू द एक्यूट केयर और एक्यूट केयर हैज बिकम सो गुड क्विक सर्जरी बेस्ट सर्जरी एवरीथिंग रोबोटिक दिस दैट बट वो डिस्चार्ज है उसका खत्म हम लोग ये बोलते हैं सर्जन के लिए वो पेशेंट अच्छा जो लौट के नहीं है फिजिशियन के लिए वो पेशेंट जैसे बार बार लौटते हैं ओके दैट इज कंप्लीट डिफरेंस इन अप्रोच राइट सो सो व्हेन इन दिस स्टडी व्हिच वाज अगेन डन इन मॉर्निंग 90 पेशेंट्स सिर्फ 90 पेशेंट्स ने टेलीफोन करके कॉल किया 28 हेड एक्सपायर फिर खड़गावा के लिए किया था एम्स अगेन 25 परसेंट गॉन एट द एंड ऑफ द डे सो हिप फ्रैक्चर इज अ सीरियस कंडीशन If we can prevent hip fracture, we can reduce mortality. Because once you immobilize, once you undergo that surgery at the age of 50, 85, then something is going to happen. It's not just the fracture per se, right? So it's not just vitamin D also. And I will make a point about calcium intake here again before starting on drugs. So uh, calcium, so we are talking about calcium. No problem in here. Yeah, we are. Sir, I think calcium, all calcium, all do. Which is right, बहुत बुरा है लेकिन लोग लेते नहीं हैं। Most recently, the analysis done, the government analysis showed that average intake would be around 420 milligrams per day, and the ICMR itself recommends about 600. तो उसको मान लो, average India को जो मतलब नहीं होता है, average can be 1200 or 100 or zero almost, you know sometimes. कुछ लोग तो ऐसे हैं, my state में रहेंगे, from when we were doing the initial studies in the 90s, वो जितना कैल्शियम है ओनली द दूध दे हैव टू चाय दैट्स इट नथिंग देयर इज नो अदर कैल्शियम इन दैट यू नो सो वी आर लो इन डाइटरी कैल्शियम एंड वी आर लो इन विटामिन डी व्हिच इज व्हाई आई बोन हेल्थ इज एन इशू बट इट हैज टू बी क्वालिफाइड वी हैव एन अमेजिंग स्टोरी ऑफ मिल्क प्रोडक्शन इवन नाउ इट इज 2016 और ज्यादा बढ़ गया मिल्क प्रोडक्शन इज एक्सप्लोडेड इन दिस कंट्री एंड इट्स It's not, you know, it's more than 20 years since it's happened. That up, upswing, and it's going to be do that. So that's one of the remarkable success stories about it. how our milk production has gone up. Okay, and usme abhi bhi buffalo milk is more than all, by the way. Okay, so so milk production has really gone up. That's fantastic. So cashew deficiency only needs to be. But it's still a problem. Rural, look here, there are in Haryana, look here, no surprises there. Five hundred thousand. और इधर देखिए जब ईस्टर्न स्टेट्स नॉर्थ ईस्टर्न दे ये तो सॉल्व नहीं है ओके कुछ कल्चरल है 
कुछ अवेलेबिलिटी है यू नो कुछ कुछ फाइनेंशियल एंड सिमिलरली वन वुड इंक्लूडिवली थिंक कि गांव में ज्यादा दूध पीते होंगे लोग ये सब सब में है मोस्ट ऑफ द मिल्क प्रोडक्शन दैट इज इंक्रीज इज कमिंग टू सिटीज टू सर्व अस इन दीस बैंक्वेट्स एंड ऑल दोस डिशेस ऑफ मिल्क बिकॉज़ द इकोनॉमिक्स वर्क्स बेटर व्हेन द सप्लाई टू सिटीज देन इन द सप्लाई एंड सो दिस इज अ प्रॉब्लम The other problem is that other sources of calcium, which you have, 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 which But there are phytates in 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 other things, you know, in vegetables. So there is a problem with the absorption of calcium. Other than dairy products, there can be a problem. Not always. Angrez was smart. Now, उसने क्या किया था? जो 1930s में जो इंडियन आर्मी को आटा मिलता था, उसमें कैल्शियम डाल दिया. मालूम है? कोई कब स्टडी वाली कुछ नहीं डाल दिया उसमें कैल्शियम. कम है, कमजोर है. 1950s जाके बंद किया गया. So, ये फोर्टिफिकेशन की हम बात करते हैं तो इंडिया में ऐसे ही पहले लोग करते यू नो वाई इंडिया दैट इन डिफ्शन नो कंफ्यूजन अबाउट दैट देर इज यू नो दैट राइट यू डोंट गो इन द सन ऑल द अदर फैक्टर्स यू नो देन वी आर वेल कवर्ड देन वी गो इन द सन कल्चरली राइट वी लाइक टू बी वेल कवर्ड इट इज टू हॉट टू एक्सपोज योर सेल्फ इन द सन इन एट नाइन मंथ ऑफ द ईयर राइट बट द ओनली पॉइंट आई वुड मेक यूर इज द पोल्यूशन द पोल्यूशन हैज हैज Played a really bad role in in all this, and therefore now, now in Delhi, when studies were done, exposing school children for half an hour every day, controlled exposure in their shorts and this, you know, in winter there was no rise in vitamin D. Because as many UV beta rays come, they are all all your particles are scattered. They are not coming. 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 लेकिन दिख भी जाता है तो देर बीच में सो एटमॉस्फेरिक पोल्यूशन फॉर अस इज अ ह्यूज कंपोनेंट ह्यूज कंट्रीब्यूटर टू वाइटिंग डी डेफिनेशन इन द सिटी और एट लीस्ट द बेल्ट्स वेर पोल्यूशन इज़ नॉट नॉट बॉम्बे आल्सो हैज़ ह्यूज पोल्यूशन ना वी लीव दिस वी लीव दिस आल्सो हु शुड हैव वन डेस्टिन Uh, women age 60, men age 65, right? Everybody, ideally, ideally, I know it's not possible, but ideally. But postmenopausal women younger than 60 years and men, I mean, the 50 upper wale bhi karna chahiye bone density. Agar aur other risk factors hain, other risk factors kya hote hain? Family history is very important, most important. Family history, very lean patient, D deficiency, sabhi ne hoti hai kare kare. So you can go at 50 also. But at 60, we should be checking bone density in most women. In our clinic policy now, for diabetes and I'll come to diabetes, we have introduced for the last two years now a policy where every person, man or woman with diabetes at the age of 60 or more, is advised the bone density. And what we checked was they don't do it immediately. Second visit, third visit, something. But 85% of our patients do ultimately get it. So. Why are we insisting on that? People with diabetes are more prone to osteoporosis. And if you're doing bone density for everybody, we are finding that 47% of them needed treatment. तो उतना भी सो रहा है। वो उन सब के fractures होंगे तो कुछ कर किया नहीं होंगे। हम उनको treat करेंगे तो उनके fractures बचा सकते हैं। So targeted screening is important. Mass screening है होने से। But targeted screening जो clinic based population है उनमें तो कर ही सकते हैं। At least that is something we can do. We take the minus 2.5 as as a sort of gold standard, right? T score minus 2.5. If you have seen the report, it is T score minus 2.5 is is osteoporosis. But many many fractures one or 2.5 to be standard. So, only T score. We don't use the T score alone to diagnose fractures. It is just an indicator. There are many more people in the osteopenic zone. Who actually fracture? The numbers are much more in osteopenic zone. 
right? But you can get fractures if you have other risk factors. So this one is 2.5, taking it as sacrosanct is not a great thing. It should you should have to combine it with your clinical judgment to decide how much is the risk for that particular patient. And sometimes you may treat people with with uh, with even minus two or even minus 1.8. You know, oh, other point, right? But so there are limitations, and we leave this. I just told you that it's the best single predictor of fracture, but it is not the only predictor. It has to be modified. And one of the things to do is to use the FRAX tool. Yes, you can download it. It's free. FRAX tool is what happens. You can add it. You don't need anything. Age, sex, weight, height, history of previous fracture, parental history of fracture, current smoking, glucocorticoids. You know, just alcohol. It's simple. It's a 30 second job. And it will calculate the risk of fracture. So that gives you a better idea. It's country specific. That gives you a better idea of the risk of fracture than just a bone density. An 80 year old woman with a minus 1.8 with very well required treatment. And a 50 year old woman with minus 2.5 may not require treatment. Because age is an independent predictor of fracture. In today we have seen that 50 years old age and minus 2.5 is a lot of disease. But 80 में सोचते हैं तो मारे 1.8 हो ही जाएगा, सही कहा जाता है, which is right. But the fracture risk is much higher for the 80 year old because age is an independent predictor of fracture. So remember that part. Okay. So you can use the FRAX tool, and now there's we we can leave there caveats of FRAX. You can ask questions if you like it. We are now coming out with FRAX Plus. I was was with Eugene McCloskey last week, and this is a beta version loud. Where they are taking into account more risk factors, glucocorticoid dose, diabetes and its duration, you know all those things. Number of falls, very very important predictor of fracture is risk of fall. Anybody who has fallen, elderly patient comes to you says that ये गिर बहुत रही है आजकल, दो बार गिर गई, कुछ हुआ नहीं लेकिन hundred percent indication for starting treatment for osteoporosis. You know, so we have to keep all that in mind. So who should be treated? Classically, recent history of fracture. Anyone who in the last two years has had an osteoporotic fracture, which is an osteoporotic fracture? Not metatarsal, not rib, right? Which other? Vertebrae. Vertebrae is the classic osteoporotic fracture. Hip, of course, is the most devastating. In younger patients, radius. And now they have added a fourth one to that, shoulder. Because shoulder and hip geometry, I mean shoulder and hip are actually the same. From four legged we became two legged. So the proximal humor is fracture. In this which we have to put koi bone that she can easy follow up with it, like diagnosis will make for it. Recent fracture is a specific indication, T score less than 2.5, and frax calculated risk. Okay. At the moment, in a very recent review, just look at India. 10% of people receive treatment after osteoporotic fracture. fracture. Treatment money, not treatment surgical. They, many of them do. But long term osteoporosis treatment is given to 10 I think it may even be less actually than 10%. Which means that when your patient has a fracture, your mother has a family, has a family, has a fracture, has a discharge, has a calcium, 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 has a Proper osteoporosis treatment is not advised to most of our patients, which is the biggest treatment gap, and which is something we are struggling very hard to fill. Even in our big hospitals, it's a big challenge. But then it's hard to sort of convince people. And they are convinced about the data, but अभी treatment शुरू करना है, शुरू कर दीजिए, अभी कर दीजिए, वो that people don't don't follow that. So this is this is where physicians come in. It is very important. How would you feel if you had a, or someone in your family or some friend had an angioplasty or a bypass surgery and was discharged without a statin or aspirin? How do you feel about that? You think the doctor is, you know, this is just substandard care, right? If you, if someone undergoes an angioplasty today and is sent out without aspirin or statin, that's not allowed, right? The same thing is here. If you treat a hip fracture and send the patient out without advice for uh, for preventing fracture, same thing. 
purpose is same, there you are preventing recurrence of heart attack, there you are preventing refraction. So we have to focus on that. You can link that. So definitely what we use in IFDMR, we recommend it anywhere over 50 with a hip fracture of the same thing. I think we already discussed this. No, 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 repeat. Please do the basic blood test always. Don't forget to do the basic blood test. Okay? Now, the, the ones here may be done in selected cases. But please make sure you have a KFP, LFP. It's very important. I have seen people getting treated, uh, you know, uh, without having a calcium check. Without having a osteomalacia treatment for osteoporosis. This first minute is going on and osteomalacia. Now it's going on. So please make sure a simple serum calcium phosphorus that was kidney function is okay. Many of these drugs can't be used. LFT is a basic test. You know, today, every lab is going on. I don't know how to do it. But somehow it is happening. Just get there with those tests. And ideally, if you find a low vitamin D, which you will, you will have PTSD. It's not going to cost you. So, we have done all the So, generally, the initial treatment is this phosphate. Alendorate 70 mg once a week or zolidronic acid 5 mg once a year. <coughs> right? Once someone has osteoporosis or has had a fracture, you will use uh, alendronate, uh, alensol, or osteophos, or any one of them once a week. But please don't be reluctant to use that. Right? Or if the patient has had a clear cut fracture and is willing, you should give an annual infusion of zelodronic acid. Right? That is also freely available. Prices really come down now. So not a problem. It's a slow infusion. Go, go for three years to five years with this. Then reassess your patient ki kya karna hai. So three years, five years, three months nahi hai. Ek do mehna kha liya. Sab patient do mehna kha liya, but chod liya. Osteophos ye ho. So you need to do that. If the patient is at high risk, please continue treatment. If you want to change agents, that can be discussed. But don't stop treatment with someone who is at high risk. <coughs> Why are bisphosphonates uh, preferred? Because this first line. Because bisphosphonates are cheap, they are easily available, there is enough data, and their effect is not, there is no rebound effect. So when you stop a bisphosphonate, the other effect comes with that, but rebound is okay. That's very, very important because bisphosphonates bone keeper is layer one of They coat the bone and they don't go away, they just stay there. So bisphosphonate accept first choice mana jata hai, lekin ye change ho raha hai. So abhi isko me explain kare hai. Always maintain vitamin D, I already told you that. Typically what we are doing as routine practice is giving 2000 IU vitamin D daily. If someone is taking 2000 IU of vitamin D daily, you can, I challenge all of you, you will not be deficient, you will not be toxic. You will fall somewhere between 20 and 40. It may be 20, in some 40, in some sabka, laga laga laga. But you will not go wrong. There cannot be toxicity. The problem is, if you are not going to be able to do it, you will not be able to do it. So, patient, you will not be able to do it. 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 So, we have to be careful about that. Unfortunately, endocrinologists end up sort sorting out prescriptions for everybody. But this is the challenge. But otherwise, if you were to take 2000 IU per day, you cannot go wrong. Safe and no toxicity and you will not be dead. And of course, higher doses will be necessary if killed. Maintain calcium intake. Now, not everyone requires a significant calcium pill. If someone is very good with their dietary intakes of calcium, then you can, you can give maybe just 250, 500 milligrams. But someone is not good with their dietary intakes, then you need to give one gram of calcium. I am talking of treating osteoporosis, not normal population. Treating osteoporosis, right? Of course, smoking, alcohol are never good, and active lifestyle is always good. What do we choose as first line therapy? That was the, uh, what I showed you was the endocrine study US guidelines. I will just tell you, the next three slides are your main slides, next three or four. Recommendations for initial first line therapy in patients who have come with vertebral fracture. Vertebral fracture is asymptomatic, you can x-ray, you can do chest x-ray, you can do x-ray, you can do x-ray, you can do x-ray. But if there is a vertebral compression, 
what should be our first hand therapy? This is at variance with the world guidance. Teriparatide should be our first therapy. Teriparatide given for 18 to 24 months, 24 months at the subquad. Why is it not there in world guide? They are, they are qualifying that now, but, but because it's so expensive. In India, it is not so expensive now. You get generic versions which I have tested and tried now, so there is no problem. You can use teriparatide as first choice. In patients who come with particular fractures, asymptomatic or symptomatic or anything, teriparatide is the very good choice. If the patient doesn't want daily shots, then you, anything, anything will work. Zoledronic acid works beautifully, denisumab, and we'll talk about denisumab. Zoledronic acid typically is given for the first three to five years, once a year, followed by denisumab. Zoledronic acid may occur gel salga gap in the heavens won't fall. You know it's okay, but one year is best. Denisumab, I'll explain. Abhi jab se COVID hoa, jab se denisumab use has increased tremendously in my practice. Because us mein hospital nahi jana hota. It's a preloaded syringe like an insulin thing and boom, you go, it takes like five seconds and anybody can give it to you. Your, your, you know, your spouse, anybody and then the patients can give it themselves. So you don't need to get intravenous infusion, you have to go to the hospital, go into daycare, it costs money to be admitted, you know, in most hospitals. Plus the fact that, you know, there is a flu-like reaction in 10% people. And like after a vaccine, you get in fever, I say, you don't need to get the vaccine. You don't need to get that is why, but otherwise, the problem with Delosumab is, it's very powerful drug, it's a very powerful drug. Problem is, when you take it off, there is a rebound increase in fact. Whereas the Zoledronic acid is not there. So Delosumab, when you remove it, you have to cover it. One or two Zoledronic acid in fact. So, Delosumab is short acting. The idea is, side effect will be too much. But the problem is, when you remove it, the problem will be too much. So this is the key balance that we have mentioned. So in practice what we do now, since Genesumab experience goes up to 10 years, right? We older patients, who have kept a card, unwritten rule, there is no guidance. That 75 people have started Genesumab. It's easy, they can give it to them for 10 years. It's no problem. Right? Whereas in younger patients, if they are willing, they prefer Zoledronic acid. If they are willing, they prefer Zoledronic acid. If they are willing, they prefer Zoledronic acid. So, I mean, of course, after the I'm talking. But if you are going to choose the effect after, so the peritonic goes on the uske baat kya karenge? You don't let the patient go. One of these has to be there. Either zone or diastema. Two years of vertebral fracture patient diet, two years of peritonic diet, uske baat kya karenge? Preferably diastema at that stage, because diastema after zoledronic, after, sorry, after teriparatide is a very powerful effect. If they don't do it, then they don't do it. This is the case of the patient choice. But it must follow by anti-resolved. If something doesn't happen, then they don't do it. If something doesn't happen, then they don't do it. What do you do with hip fracture? 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 What is the initial first line therapy? IV zoledronic acid is a very good option there. I say that before the discharge, I will put it in the first place. But my orthopedic friends don't agree. I mean, they agree, they do it, but every time I have to push. It's not like, who can take it or why do they do it? Some fever will come for a little bit. You know, so there is some logic in their issue. But because patients cannot come back. If you give them one zoledronic acid, then you have to protect them for one year. So that is it. But nowadays, Genesumab is being use more and more because of convenience and lack of side effects. But, but, there is a map, if you have given it, you have to give the patient some mechanism, some sticker, you have to give the patient some sticker, you have to give the patient some date, you have to give the patient some date, you have to give the patient some date, you have to give the patient some date. So, people have to give the patient some date. And then, the patient is lost. And then, his rebound is all over. That's not okay. That you can do is all. Not with Delosumab. So there is a difference in the trend is changing for Delosumab. Teriparatide, why did I say teriparatide in hip fracture? Data on hip fracture with teriparatide is limited. Vertebral fracture data is very strong with teriparatide. 
ऐसे आप बहुत देखते होंगे हाई रिस्क विदाउट फ्रैक्चर क्योंकि फ्रैक्चर वाला जो ऑर्थोपेडिक पे जाएगा जनरली विद फास्टरेट्स इजी ओरल बट मेनी पेशेंट्स ओल्डर पेशेंट्स हाई रिस्क डेलिसमैप से भी शुरू कर सकते हैं कोई दिक्कत नहीं इन सम पेशेंट्स विद मैनेज 3.5 और लेस यू कैन कंसीडर टेरिपेरिटाइड आल्सो इवन विदाउट फ्रैक्चर इवन विदाउट फ्रैक्चर एंड for all who are not agreeing or you are not sure this is borderline risk this that an endronate 17 mg i can say a bandronate 150 once a month is very popular but the data is not good enough so if you are using oral bisphosphonate okay. use oral alendronate 17 mg monthly good old alendronate 20 years old medicine combination therapy lena chahiye kya i think sushil was referring to that should you be giving combination therapy it's still in the, uh, I think we should leave that to a bone mineral person. It's very tricky to give commission. That means data is also tricky and usage is tricky. Which patient should get both drugs? Like teleparatide with denosumab, for example. That is the most powerful combination. But I think we should, I don't think that we should routinely be prescribing. In my practice, I'll be prescribing combination therapy two, three times a year. And I prescribe at least fresh three, four patients a day osteoporosis uh, treatment. Okay, so I think what do we do after starting? Coming to the end, we measure bone density uh, uh, every one to three years. Not change in the And there is no dramatic change in the bone density. There is no subtle change in the bone But we are also now monitoring bone turnover marker, that is a big change in my practice. Like, beta cross laps, you can see that you have a lal lab or some place that comes from every time, they all do it. Beta cross laps is a marker of bone turnover. What happens is that when we use active resorptives, supposing my beta cross laps is 800, reading 800, imagine, and I have a dimension of laga eyes. One month later, my reading is 80 at night. That means bone loss rope the arch. This osteoclast is out. So if we block the osteoclast, then the bone loss will stop. So you need to see a sharp decline in bone turnover markers like CTX or beta cross lamps. And we are using that a lot in our practice. Because the blood test is much easier than getting a bone density than bone density फैंटम था कि नहीं था, अलाइनमेंट था कि नहीं था, क्वालिटी क्या थी, मशीन कौन सी थी, मेक कौन सा था, ऑपरेटर क्या था, यूज़ दैट आल्सो करना ही है, लेकिन वी डिपेंड अ लॉट, सो इफ समवन इज़ ऑन जोरेडोनिक एसिड और ऑन डेवलप्ड सिंथेटिक, यू विल फाइंड और अलाइनमेंट, यू विल फाइंड अ मेजर डिक्लाइन � you know, it's a very, very important marker of whether the drug is working or not. Beta cross maps, also called CTX. Dusra bhi ek hota hai, I don't want to confuse you, I'm not going too much into this. P1 and P hota hai, do hote ho saate, do hote hai, common. Beta cross maps is for bone loss, osteoclast se nikalta hai. P1 and P osteoblast se nikalta hai, bone formation. Jab teriparitai use karte hai, PTX use karte hai, which is the bone forming agent. So, P1 and P will see the whole forming marker. So, there are, what I am saying is, other than bone density and other than fracture, there are blood markers now available, fasting sample 8 a.m., which are really helping us. So, you know that the drug is working. There is no doubt. This is an anadronate and it has not been taken away from the bone turnover. It has not been taken away from the bone. Most likely, it is not taken away from the bone. So, those kind of things are there. We will leave the details. I think I'll leave it at this. I have a different sort of perspective today. So, so we can identify this test. Yes, I have a very fast idea. 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 That's a good guess. It's older than blood. It's older than Maroli. Yes, which part of this? What is this in there? Of course. Of course, it is connected to it. 
You are right. The same ball comes there. So, 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 surviving structure in Delhi. This is not difficult to climb. Yeah, it will look too well for both. Yes. Yeah. Sir, I would uh, request you to please come here and Dr. S.K. Mathur sir to come here. Yes. <laughs> I would request all of you with folded hands to please follow decorum. Ask your questions after the moderators have given their uh, uh, opinion and preferably ask the questions one by one. There will be many, many questions and I would request some questions coming from the gynecologist also. And uh, I would first uh, start with Dr. S.K. Mathur sir to set the ball rolling. Vijay, sir, come mic. Sir, come mic. Sir, thank you very much for a lovely talk on a very important and a very commonly faced problem in the practice we all face as a physician, you said. Osteoporosis is ever a challenging, uh, I would say, uh, entity or diagnosis we make it, how to diagnose, how to take care of the patient with osteoporosis and how to treat them. This is a very well talk, sir. So I have only question, sir. I am just treating thyroid patient more often. How often we do the DEXA in thyrotoxic doses patient, those who are already at a high risk of osteoporosis? That's one thing I would like to request. So uh, I think that's uh, that's a really important question. And it is it is a it is like it is a definitely Thyrotoxic patients is still okay because thyrotoxicosis we control in a few months. But hypothyroidism on introxin is also a slightly greater risk of osteoporosis. So I would certainly, as I, as I was saying, we should do case finding studies rather than everyone. So definitely patients who are on thyroxine, certainly at 60 at least, I mean very, very conservative, should have a bone density done. There's no question. So postmenopausal women and anyone over 60, should have a bone density done if they are on uh, thyroid medication. It's not a huge risk, not like diabetes, but it is there. And it's a good chance to check their bone health and because the thyroid medicine is going to continue forever. Thank you, sir. Sir, uh, wonderful talk as usual, sir. I would like to, rather I have reversed my sequence. Uh, I was noting my questions and the last question I'm asking first, that, uh, Biomarkers in bone turnover, whether formation or resorption, how frequently are you using and how, how good they are and how cost effective because most of us are not even aware which lab is doing and whether we should do it on treatment. So I think this is a great question because if you had asked me before the pandemic, I would have said it's uh, not really available, not reliable. But the truth is that in the last about three years, uh, they are now available with the big labs, uh, with uh, Dang and Lal and SRL also, which is called something else now, and with, 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 with Max. So, so they are available. With us, uh, we, we do all, all the bone turnover markers. So, what I am saying is that in our practice now, and this I have been able to implement only for maybe about two years now, everyone we are starting on treatment gets a baseline CDX, I think, beta cost maps. Uh, they used to cost a lot, they still cost about more than a thousand rupees, but they are done like once or twice a year, so it's not something you're going to do every day. Uh, but I think they are very helpful. Sir, so about the uh, familiar uh, relation yes. of osteoporosis, we are so aware and so uh, scared of uh, familiar hypercholesteremia once if I am cholesterol level very high, we will go for everybody, go check your kids, yes. your mother, father. Here we, we usually omit that familiar part. If we are finding one person, his kids and kids, kids and kids are not so involved in the treatment or diagnosis. How, how important so, is that? So, the data suggests that maternal history of hip fracture has a very strong correlation with fractures in the hospital. So the other connections are not so well proven. 
and not just to low bone density. Low bone density will also be genetically determined. That's very, very true. There's no question. It is thought that more than half, some people say up to 70% of your bone density is determined by your genes. And you're only doing all this for the remaining 30%. Okay. So, so, but yes, maternal history of hip fracture. So in general, we ask for maternal history of fracture. It is definitely a predictor. No, in fact, in, in the algorithm, maternal history of hip fracture is the most powerful predictor. No, but Milti nahi is treating sir. Yes, it is a predictor. Because this is a crude effect. The general screening way, maternal issue, in large epidemiological studies, maternal history of hip fracture correlates with, you know. Sir, one interesting point I noted while I was studying about osteoporosis, that hydrochlorothiazide may prevent it. For prevention of uh, a high risk patients, are we using as a prevention in non-hypertensives, as we are using so many non-diabetic medicines, for prevention of heart failure and yes. weight loss and so many other yes. uh, so, uh, so pleiotropic effects. Yes. So it's a pleiotropic effect of hydrochlorothiazide or uh, is it a Hydro Hydrochlorothiazide uh, tends to retain calcium and you know that it can sometimes even cause mild hypercalcemia. So for at least 30 years there have been studies showing thiazide diuretic use may be associated with a little lower risk of hip fracture. But it is not in a positive condition or in a, the, the relationship is not so strong that it could be used as a prophylaxis. My last two half questions are, one is juvenile osteoporosis, how common? And the second one is about calcium levels, whether you prefer ionized calcium or total calcium. So I think ionized and total calcium both are okay. If you do a total calcium, then do a corrected calcium. But if ionized calcium is becoming more widely available as it is now, then I would definitely now we have started doing more and more, but ionized calcium is important. And juvenile osteoporosis is a very interesting area. Now that of course you should send to a bone mineral specialist if you find someone like that. We are learning about it now. Why we are learning about it? Because we are we have genomic studies available. You know, we didn't have them earlier. So we were guessing here was a Jinko hum idiopathic label kar rahe usme bahut saaro ke recognized gene defects nikalate and we are collecting those kind of, they are not very frequent, it's a rare condition but when we do, it's it's fascinating you know osteoporosis, pseudoglyma, pseudoglyma, kya kya nikalata hai which I had no idea, I had no idea that these things I mean, we knew, kitab le pada ke, kitab le pada ke, pada diya lekin wo actually we are able to do that so you know, these things like more turnover markers like genomic studies have significantly changed the way we approach uh, this condition in the last three, four years. Our Kripacharya, Dr. Prashar. Sir, as usual, as expected, master class, sir, thank you. Uh, sir, I have two questions, if you allow me. Uh, what is more cost effective, universal screening for vitamin D deficiency or uh, bone marrow density? Or we uh, give universal supplementation of vitamin D and calcium. My second question, sir, if you take me one right now. One, let me just okay. I think this is a very important question. So, universal screening of BMD is a dream. I don't think it ever happened. And universal screening of a D level is certainly not cost effective. So, in a deficient population, urban population, especially in vulnerable groups, not in everybody. So I wouldn't use the word universal supplementation, but I would say that in older patients, in those who are indoors, though, you just give some, in winter months you can do it universal also. So universal calcium, but vitamin D universal calcium depending on the dietary calcium. But not the test, the test will not be cost effective. Thank you sir. Second is, uh, uh, in vitamin D deficiency you said, it leads to parathyroid overactivity. So does it lead to parathyroid adenoma or even cancers for that matter? That's an amazing question. I mean, that's uh, a huge area of interest for me. Uh, yes, uh, secondary hyperparathyroidism typically is hyperplastic gland, spore glands. Sorry, gland. But if it's very chronic, which is very chronic, it's adenoma. So one of the biggest mm -hmm. challenges for us in the OPD is to figure out whether this is primary or secondary, sometimes it can be very confusing. The key point to remember for practical purposes for physician group is the serum calcium level. <laughs> yes, if it's primary hyperpara, it will be high. If it's not high, or at least high, at least 10.24 to touch. 
if it is 9 or 8 and you are getting high pH it is almost always secondary. There is a rare condition called normocalcemia, yeah. primary which only. So you can get it in the normal. Cancer, parathyroid cancer is not normal. We have seen of course cases, but it's not normal. <coughs> Thank you. Dr. Koda. Uh, I think I first time I was about to ask four questions, but I think two asked by Dr. Karra. My only question now, which postmanate you said more or less it should be first choice if there is no history of fracture. Or teriparatide still you think though you can afford it is it should can be first choice. So for we are talking of vertebral fractures. If you are talking vertebral fractures, teriparatide should be first choice. No fracture. No, no, no fracture. In no fracture teriparatide is very low. And करते हैं कभी-कभी जब बिल्कुल ही frail कोई है और minus 3.5 BMD है minus 4, then we do use it. Otherwise, if T score is minus 3, no history of fracture, not frail. Is phosphonate or denosumab? Is phosphonate. Then if each 2000 daily or 6000, we give monthly is it same or different? That's again a great question, a separate talk. One day we talk about the duty, then we go through all those. Yeah, I think that's all. But, but. One line is that daily smaller dose supplementation is now shown to be superior to intermittent high dose. Whereas we have used intermittent high dose all our lives, but based on the new evidence, including some of our own, we have now changed to uh, daily supplementation. Less fluctuation and, and, and uh, less chances of hypercalcemia. Sir, any role of injectable 6 lakh units? So, uh, I have not used injectable 6 lakh units for at least 20 years. Yeah, you are not okay. Then we adjust it. Yes. We adjust it. I am absolutely against injectable yes. units. Yeah. Why? Yeah. There is only two indications. Number one, when we are in a teaching hospital, rural population, somebody comes with rickets. Or, or frank osteopathy, you have to take an injection. If you have to do something, you have to do something. You have to do something. You have to do something. No, no, no. I think there was. So the second ind indication is someone who has severe malabsorption, like not able to hold an MD. Those are the only two indications. Otherwise, the dose is too high. The studies are very limited, and for some reason, in this, everywhere in the world, it's gone. But there is one. There is one. There is one. One case reported in newspaper: the patient died because somebody wrote 66 lakh unit. And the patient continued it for a very, very long period. Maybe we have published, and he died of this. series in uh, Clinical and Technology Oxford seven, eight years ago. Shameful, actually, but all atrogenic hypercalcemia because of injectable vitamin D. Yeah. Dr. Sajid Dang, sir. Uh, Dr. Padar, sir. Okay. Hey, Dr. Kiran, just a minute. Uh, Dr. Sanjeev Dang. Sir, just as a GP. We have young children, you see, the passion of getting medical examination with vitamin D, but they come to us with vitamin D as low as 4. But when you look at the history, they are athletes playing a lot of games, and you know, the parents are very panicky. How do we go about in these children? So, uh, see, you will give vitamin D, of course. The issue is that anyone below 10, you will always give vitamin D, no question. Probably below 20, you might want to give, but below 10, you will, there's no debate. So the issue is that we do not know what determines the PTH rise uh, after uh, after in vitamin D deficiency. I mean, there are that's again a separate talk. We can discuss what are possible factors. So if there is no rise in PTH with a vitamin D of four, but the mushkil like eight, eight to hota hai, we don't get a PTH rise, right? then you will not get florid bone disease. So you should still suffer. But we have you know, people who are taking injections, children are taking injections. Should three lakhs or so? Only reason could be if your if your patient is going to go away and don't know when he's going to come back, you have to what they take the teacher college. Oral philadelphia was going injection whole cake for any cabin. So for high doses see you think it's therapy, it's healing. When you're looking at supplementation, maintaining a level, no. My question is just a minute, sir. Just a minute, sir. He is asking, please sit down, Dr. Kantru. We will come to you, sir. Sir, we have this is more probably a gynecologist, but we have young women, 40, 30 surgery, getting into menopause. 
Now, where do we stand in terms of osteoporosis or getting the BMD done? So, early menopause is a risk factor for osteoporosis, but there are very few indications of doing a bone density below 15. So, all these hospitals that are doing bone density, uh, you know, at 40 health package, some package. Dr. Kiran, man. And then they come to me saying, I don't know what to do with it. Dr. Kiran, man. Dr. Kiran, man. Nice talk, sir. How common, any side effect of injection in Dilma Osunaya and how common it is? So, the side effects of injection, acute side effects are hypocalcemia. If you give it in somebody, either Dilma Osunaya or Zolidronic acid, if you give it in somebody, Without correcting their vitamin D and calcium status, you can get severe hypocalcemia. That is one. So if we get, don't see it all now, but we used to. When we were not aware so much. That is one. Uh, acute side effects with denosumab are, are very rare. Hardly anything. Okay. Uh, we have omitted that whole part of chronic side effects. The chronic side effects of both these molecules could be atypical femoral fractures. And in exceedingly rare situations, osteoporosis of the jaw. ONJ is the oncology of the jaw. Because they want to protect the bone from whatever. But atypical femoral fractures are being seen. Okay. 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 Uh, excellent talk. Uh, the only question you have already answered in that part is daily dose of 2000 IU or short of 60,000 children. Compliance is much more in once a month, sir. But your so, daily as well. Compliance, I mean, I recommend that school children, I think the government should be giving 60,000 once a month to all school children. I'm just saying, if there's a choice in the clinic, in subtlety, daily you better. It's not like a day and night. So for us, it's better to do Yes, better to do Dr. Achal Kandro, sir. The parent died is a synthetic PTA card. So how does it act in polarizing the calcium to the bone? Yes, that's a that's an amazing question also, a very basic question and the correct question. Because in hyperparathyroidism, I'm just explaining, we lose bone. Yes, sir. So when we have a sustained PTH elevation, that drives the osteoclasty, and you get bone loss. When you have intermittent elevation, like you give a shot once a day, boom, it goes up, it goes down. Then it stimulates the osteoclast more. So there is a trick in the bone where a chronic stimulation is different than acute intermittent stimulation. That is why there is a difference. Dr. Pallu Sikha. Usi ka bhi fusion laga diye se to bone loss hon laga Let's welcome our thoracic surgeon friend from Sargangaram Hospital after three months layoff. She is in Hyderabad, etc. Welcome, ma'am. Thank you, sir. It's an absolute privilege to listen to your talk. Uh, I just had one question. We've like operated four to five patients of ectopic parathyroid in this past one year. So, I know it's a rare thing, but it's a potentially curative problem. So, how do we sensitize people to really look for it uh, is something that uh, we are wondering over. Because uh, we've had patients who uh, underwent a femoral fracture repair. Six months down the line, they get detected with an ectopic parathyroid. So, that's, uh, you know, that's really not right. I mean, that's really not right and part of medical fraternity. We are seeing the same thing. That when you go for a, a fixation, etc., no one bothers to look at the calcium. Calcium is not there. If you say the calcium is not there, if calcium is high, then you have to chase that down. And if calcium is high and PTH is high, normal or high, there is no other diagnosis except primary then you have to do the right scanning and find where it is and treat accordingly. Primary hyperparathyroidism is not that uncommon as you think it is. If you were to look at the calcium levels of all the patients who undergo <coughs> health checks for anything, and as well as health checks, these lab health checks are all time, every lab is doing it, all the calcium is done. If the calcium is going to 10, then please, please get a PTH done and chase that down. Don't ignore it, it's like this. And many of them will pick up uh, hyperparathyroidism. So, hyperparathyroidism 
in the West is the third most common endocrine disease after diabetes and thyroid. And I think it may be true here also. We get in realizing that much more now. <coughs> no, it causes a demyogenesis. I mean, it's a neoplastic disease. Sir has uh, put it in the right context. I saw a patient recently who came to me and her calcium levels was routine. She used to get only routine tests done. Consistently over the last three years, her calcium levels were 13, 14, 15. I investigated that patient. I got her uh, PTS done. Her PTS was very high. I spoke to Dr. Lalit. He said, Bhai, this is uh, parathyroid adenoma rule out. Ka. So I got her ultrasound done from Dr. Mahajan and they said that there is borderline report, some hyperactivity, some hyperplasia. So I told him, he said, get the MRI done, the contrast MRI done. I got the contrast MRI done and there was a parathyroid adenoma. I referred that case to sir, to Dr. Abhish <laughs> Mittal sir. And sir gave the compliment, that yeah, this person has seen your calcium. He said, I have gone to the doctor and the one who has given me the package, I have also shown him. So he said, this calcium will be like this. Let me leave it. Two other people. So, 13, 15 and 17 have not been bothered. And I have sent the patient to the patient. After that, the patient has gone to the doctor. And then she had some correction in AIMS. She got operated in AIMS. Pratibha, I'm talking about. Now, on the on the, on the contrary, I have a family uh, which 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 I was uh, seeing over the last so many years. I started my practice in Nizamuddin, and uh, I started seeing this family long, long ago in 1995. The first child by was rickettic, small child with pigeon chest. The second child was pigeon chest, and then the family shifted to Malaysia and then to Turkey. And then their daughter developed rickets, and I sent the entire family to Dr. Amrish Mittal, sir. <laughs> so, so this is a very, these are very common things. So my questions are few. Uh, you said that vitamin D and calcium are definitely related to osteoporosis, sir. Is the vitamin D levels quantitatively related to osteoporosis? No, I think it's like, uh, it's like uh, you, uh, you have to maintain adequate vitamin D for adequate bone health at any age. And if you don't maintain adequate vitamin D, you will have unhealthy bones which will be more prone to osteoporosis. So a low vitamin D will make you more prone to osteoporosis. Some people will not get it. It's like, again, I'll give you the same example. High LDL will make you more prone to heart attack, but you may not get a heart attack. So there is a strong relationship. Uh, it makes no sense for a population or a clinic population or a general population to have such high prevalence of D deficiency. So we should try to correct it. If patient is deficient in vitamin D, we are allowing her to be at higher risk for osteoporosis. Sir, you mentioned postmenopausal state as being one of the risk factors for osteoporosis. Most important. But all postmenopausal women do not have osteoporosis. Yes, of course. The reason, sir. So there are so, and nothing is unique factor, you really know that, right? So post-menopausal state, the bone density will go down as menopause comes. It just goes down sharply. The moment estrogen, estrogen keeps your calcium in the bone. Estrogen gives the calcium binding. So you will lose some bone. Now if you start with a very good bone density initially, even if you lose some bone, you're okay. Right? If you start with a poor, that's why chronic vitamin D, all that is very important. Building better bones. So if you have a poor baseline, poor bank balance, poor bone balance to start off, then you will quickly become osteoporotic. Even at that time, when the time you are losing bone, if you are taking enough calcium, enough vitamin D exercising, you will lose much less. So all these factors. So you mentioned lassitude, lethargy, inactivity, being bedridden and being indoors and the postmenopausal state and some glucocorticoid use as being one of the preeminent causes of osteoporosis. There are others also, like alcohol overuse yes. and smoking. Your view on that? 100%. So, so uh, uh, smoking, no doubt. Even a few cigarettes will increase. There is, there is no question. Uh, alcohol, uh, small amounts of alcohol is not been associated. But the same limit that we say, more than 50 ml per day, uh, that many units will likely to be Sir, we often hear about the calcium requirement and we get confused. Some 500 mg per day, some 1000 mg per day. Sir, what is the actual calcium intake for a woman that should be encouraged and for a man? Is it different for both or the same? 
When we are treating someone for osteoporosis, then we should ensure a 1000 mg calcium intake. For all others, the ICMR recommends 600 mg calcium intake per day. 1000 elemental calcium. So, elemental calcium. So, so uh, 600 ICMR is very conservative. I would say, yes, we should be, especially in older people and in uh, postmenopausal women, we should try to be as close to 1 gram as possible. Because that can be a combination of diet. Plus supplement or just diet, very difficult to just diet. <laughs> sir, something that I want to ask on behalf of everyone. Bone is not not all calcium, sir. No, it's not. It, it is it is iron, yes. it is magnesium, yes. it is selenium. Yes. Sir, when we are replacing vitamin D and calcium, yes. should we also not bother about the iron studies? So, so a um, lot of uh, stuff on magnesium these days. So it's okay, but their deficiencies have not been associated with major issues. Okay. There's no harm in doing that. But you can't say ask magnesium. So many hard magnesium so Vitamin D era is over now, but magnesium era is Every patient comes with magnesium report. Uska sab kuch usi se ho Uski kamzori bhi usi se ho raha hai. Ye bhi ho raha hai. Sab magnesium. Magnesium deficiency is not common. Okay. It's hard to become. There is. Usually significant magnesium in our diet. PPI is <coughs> The PPI is also a risk I didn't discuss. Very important risk factor for osteoporosis. Very important. Uh, Madam Chakravarti, please ask your question. So just a simple but practical question. Why do you stop taking uh, bisphosphonates? Or to put it very just in some will say, one year, Yes, yes, of course. Yes, we have that. So, uh, with with uh, injectable bisphosphonate, zolidronic acid, we give it for three years. Then we give a pause, see how the patient is doing, how the bone turnover markers are, follow up, and then maybe we can give for three years more. The patient is very high risk. For alendronate, five years we review karenge. Three years pe kar sakte, three se pehle to koi matlab hi nahi. Now, if at the end of five years, let's say, the patient has improved a lot, fracture risk has gone down, bone density is better, patient is much fitter, you know, then you can stop the bisphosphonate and follow up the patient annually with bone turnover markers, bone density, and decide when to restart. So, so this is called a drug holiday. Huh? Anybody who we are treating for osteoporosis. Uh, Naresh, <coughs> Dr. Tulsi, sir. Yes. Master question. Master the master teacher. Sir, go ahead. So, uh, what a pleasure, uh, Dr. Amrish. <laughs> Yeah. So, Amrish, what a pleasure to listen to you. So, maybe one of the best endocrinologists in nationally, not nationally, probably internationally. Yes, absolutely. We all agree. We all agree, Dr. Matsu said. Sir, now, talking about uh, DEXA, which is recommended in osteoporosis, but changes in trabecular and in cortical micro architecture probably would, you know, diagnose this condition earlier than the DEXA. What do you say, sir? So, uh, when we use a tool for diagnosis, it has to fulfill many criteria. Uh, undoubtedly, HRQ, PQCT or HRQCT is a superior technique to DEXA. But you can't subject everyone to radiation of CT scan and the expense of CT scan and the problems in the waiting list of CT scan and follow that up and you know it's impossible to do those studies even. So nowhere in the world. So DEXA is convenient. Right. Radiation exposure is minimal. Minimal. And but it will not reflect bone quality. <coughs> it will not reflect chemical or architecture or So uh, to further my question would we would you say, Dr. Ambrish, that osteoporosis can be diagnosed in the setting of a fragility fracture, even if there's a normal T score? Hundred percent. Right. That's what I was saying. That many fractures occur in the osteopenic zone, a relatively normal T score. But uh, uh, 
and one has to be therefore cognizant of that fact and look at the overall risk rather than just treating a marriage 2.5. That's very important. So talking about the posture and a body can apply the frac score. Let me proceed further. So talking about the osteoanabolic drugs like the PTH receptor agonists, the teleparatide and the valoparatide, not to forget the robosuzumab which you didn't talk about. This seems to be the latest drug to treat today, especially you know in patients who probably have increased risk of fractures. So talk us through the latest drugs that we have. So the two late, uh, new drugs from this which are not available here, which is why I excluded that. One is Avaloparatide, like periparatide, which is a PTH uh, receptor agonist. That Romosuzumab. Romosuzumab is a, is a, is a very yes. powerful drug. Yeah. Romosuzumab probably is the single most powerful drug which is anabolic uh, <coughs> First anabolic to come after teriparatide and evaloparatide. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Abhi wo India mein aayi nahi. Kamsi kam ek do saal nahi aayi. Iske uspe ek issue jo. I hai believe eternity is available for uh, seventy thousand rupees per injection. No, no need to rush for those. Hardly any patients will be really uh, significantly requiring it. But yes, for the very severely osteoporotic, romosuzumab may turn out to be a good option. But I have one problem with romosuzumab. The package insert says that it should be, you have to be careful in patients at high cardiac risk. Now which 60 year old Indian is not at high cardiac risk? So, so there is going to be a pregnancy. So there is a black box warning saying that prior heart attacks and strokes, this is contraindication. And at least 30% of the patients on this, you know, it's a heightened risk of uh, uh, cardiac events and arterial stiffening, arterial calcifications as well. So, so the risk is not as much because some other studies have not shown a risk. But one study, if it has shown a risk for such a thing, then one has to be careful. So, I'm not so excited about the most. No. Uh, it's okay. So I would be much happier if we use what we have carefully. Okay. Probably right. next year or a year. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And lastly, let me talk uh, and ask you about the hydrogenic drugs which will cause, you know, osteoporosis. You are a dermatologist, we know, by causes. Yes. What What is the standard now? What is the latest, latest clarity on SGLT2 inhibitors? See, uh, so, about, maybe about two years back or three years back, we probably thought the SGLT2 inhibitors have, you know, increased, you know, causes of superosis. No longer now. The uh, meta-analysis recently said they really are neutral drugs. Talk us through that, sir. So, especially can I give the SGLT2 inhibitors? No longer. In, 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 in no longer. In, 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 in the beginning. In the beginning. Yeah, in the beginning. Have uh, uh, not shown any greater risk. Uh, but I would still be careful in those who have a tendency to fall, you know, elderly, frail patients, when you put them on SGL2, there is mild hypotension sometimes. You got to weigh your patient. But as such overall, do they have any direct damaging effect on the bone? No, not at no. all. Yes, they are neutral. They are neutral. And uh, what about uh, other drugs like AEDs? You know, that is anti epileptic drugs. drugs are different. Sir. Chemos. <laughs> Anticoagulants like heparin and no access and immunosuppressants, not to forget PPIs also. They so cause osteoporosis. The commonly used drugs, the most important to remember is PPI because it reduces calcium absorption and you may be deficient without realizing. And PPI usage is close to 100% in our country. Yes, sir. Absolutely. So, 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 this is one challenge. Uh, Anti-epileptics and anti tuberculosis also, they increase osteomalacia actually. They increase vitamin D metabolism. And sometimes you got to be careful that if you <coughs> different, you can get, uh, you know, you can get significant osteomalacia. Especially phenytoin. So phenytoin is a very rapid metabolism. Oh, I mean, right. Thank you, sir. Uh, Thank you, sir. Over, over treatment with that way, if you are giving as Dr. Mishra patient, over can you give the mic to Dr. Kiran? Yeah, I Yes, ma'am. Uh, Dr. Kiran, last question. We need to wind up.
the day on which alendronate is taken, calcium should not be taken, is it uh, right? I have heard about this. No, you can definitely take it at night. We should take calcium. There should be some gap. Uh, I would, uh, uh, we'll wind up the question answer session. I would request Dr. Ambal Tanda sir uh, to summarize this wonderful, wonderful CME uh, for all of us. Before that, I, I just mentioned one thing. I'm really happy that all the DNB fellows and students are also coming. Oh, very good. Sir, you have to come here in a month, so every three months he should come in our class. Yeah, yeah. Let Dr. Kala sir summarize it quickly for us. Dear friends, we must agree, it was one of our best lecture today. After a long time. Pin drop silence. And those who said that we should have to get a new time on the tariff, sir. We should have to get a new tariff. When we will talk about, if you were saying that this story is true, then that story is true. So, let's give a new tariff. Dr. Chavani is ready. So, as I always say, you remember that beautiful lecture today. And you should serial on Guru Darshan, Bharat Ek Khoj and the last line about it was sponsored by Tisco and they used to say after having sponsored the whole program we also make steam sir also treats diabetes so so I would I would I would just tell sir to to it's been a long time we have not heard about diabetes maybe down the line if you take an appointment today maybe four years will be mature Okay, dear friends, just just to summarize, osteoporosis very common. Above 50 50 percent of female will have it, and 20 percent of male above 50 today they will also experience osteoporosis. Such a common thing, and we have to be very uh, watchful and keeping in mind that this person may be having osteoporosis along with other problems, chronic problems like diabetes, hypertension, smoking, obesity taking steroid and so many other medicines which we have, we have just counted that they can call. So we have to keep in mind and always treat in time. And the four pillars he has always uh, recommended. The pillars are Elendronate to start. There was one step, one of uh, CME which had refuted Elendronate as villains. Yes. So we today we gained the glory of Elendronate in order to be fortunate. And uh, Dinosumab and Periparatide, and of course, not to forget the lifestyle changes which have to be always there. And of course, positive thinking. Best of luck. Thank you very much.